This is a quick test to make sure people can hear me. People can hear me, right? The words I'm saying now, they're getting put out to the universe, and, and you can hear these things that I'm saying. I just want to check, because we're on a new system. Stuff doesn't work. So if you can hear me, if you could let me know really quickly, that'd be great. Hey, it's working. Okay, back to the countdown, folks. See you soon. Wait, no, we got to make sure one other thing's working. Yeah, it probably is. All right, see ya.
Hello, and welcome back to the Orion Arm. I am Mark, the comrade behind the curtain, let's say. And today, we are continuing our progress building the Dawn of Victory star map. So, if you have no idea what any of this is about, I'll give you a quick recap. At the start of the year, we launched our new world building project, a setting we're calling Dawn of Victory. It's a mix between science fiction, alternate history, Lovecraftian horror, all that good stuff. And a big part of that uh, project is the Dawn of Victory star map. All our star systems, nebula, gas clouds, all that good stuff. So, that's what we're building here today. But, should be mentioned, this is uh, technically session two. I think our first one was a few weeks ago now. And I learned a lot uh, during that first session. The first thing I learned is that you're witnessing me, <laughs> or you're hearing me living through my greatest fear which is apparently trying to do work in front of hundreds of people. So, uh, a bit of a learning curve on this one, but uh, we have uh, come to some conclusions. So the first thing we're gonna do this stream is it's gonna be more of a podcast rather than just a work session. I'm gonna do my best to uh, uh, explain what's going on and periodically answer questions uh, whenever they come up. Yeah, assuming people have them. Priority is given to uh, Super Chats. I think you know the drill. It's typical YouTube podcast stuff. But, um, a couple things I want to mention first. Uh, let's see if any of this stuff's working, by the way. Uh, as we're going along, we're going to be adding a bunch of star systems to this map. If you would like to help out and keep track of all these star systems, we have a link that's probably going to show up in chat sometime soon to a Google Doc where people are compiling all these names. Uh, if you want to help out, help keep track, that is the place to do it. Should be noted, though, uh, that is not a place to add your own suggestions, at least not yet. Uh, we had a whole lot of suggestions from our first session. Uh, appreciate it, but can't take them right now. I'll be talking more about how that's going to work. Uh, how about right now, actually? So, crowdsourcing or crowd... Yeah, I guess it's crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing lore is going to be a small part of this project. Not a huge one, but a, but a part of it. And I've been trying to think about how best to keep it all organized, because I have my own vision for this project, and people have suggestions, and I want those two to you know, work together. So, talking to the Kaiser Reich team, they got a few things uh, to say, but uh, the big thing I'm going to try out this session, maybe next session, is something I'm going to call, I'm going to call them bounties, which is I'm going to put out a request to the universe. Say, for example, suggestions for Brazilian star systems. We'll make a sheet on that document. People can put in their suggestions, uh, and that's hopefully how we'll keep this organized, is keeping it limited, so we're not just getting you know hundreds of uh, hundreds of suggestions but rather stuff linked to whatever we're working about uh, working on currently so hope all that makes sense it's uh still a lot to figure out here as we go along but i feel like these streams can only get better and better right yes maybe okay second thing i've learned is that i'm not going to worry too much uh, about naming these star systems as i'm placing them because it's slowing down the process too much so how it'll probably work is you know, I'll just put down a whole bunch of stuff, come up with something that looks good, and then we'll figure out the names uh, afterwards. And hopefully we'll incorporate those bounties I was talking about uh, into that. So, that's uh, all the major stuff I've learned here uh, from last time. But some other really interesting stuff happened last stream as well. The big thing, and this is a real career highlight, actually, you know what? Uh, let's switch some stuff around. So, since last stream, among the other things we learned, is that I didn't love the way the, the HUD was looking here. So we got a whole new setup now that, ah oh man, it's gonna break as soon as I try it for the first time, right? No, okay, that seems like it's working. Okay, so this is the new, uh, this is the new uh, overlay for when we're working on world building stuff. And I think it looks pretty slick. I'm just gonna sit here and look at it for a second, make sure everything's functioning. Yes, all right, yep, it's all working. So this is the new setup, um, and this can do some special things, uh, assuming, once again, everything works right. So, uh, I don't know. Hey, <laughs> look at that. The system works. Oh, yeah, okay, this is huge. Everything's working, we're all here, I'm excited. All right, now I want to talk into that thing, or I want to talk about that thing I was interrupted by myself earlier about. Okay, so, last stream, we're working on this section of the galaxy. Everyone's excited and having a good time. Little did I realize, 
Our man, uh, Tim Barton, the guy who actually painted this map, he was watching that stream too, and he was painting along to the stream, working on the same parts that uh, we were working on. So, let's turn off the, uh, the details. This is what the uh, star map looked like at the start of last stream, and hopefully this works. Yeah, and this is what it looks like now. So, that is a very subtle change. Wait, also did something just pop up on screen? Something might still be broken, we're still figuring out stuff, but uh, you will note some very small edits have been made to the map. Small, but uh, detailed and cool looking. So there's more detail uh, around this nebula here, the Indian arm, and a bunch more detail around the Apollo subcluster that we were designing last stream. So, I don't know, that was a, a career highlight for me to have Tim working along with us. That was uh, pretty damn cool. Yeah, a bunch of cool, like, there's now an arch there. I think that's pretty slick. Big fan of that. Of course, the problem is, he added this cool, like, I don't know what, what that is. It's like a star supernova, perhaps, or just maybe like a weird halo effect. But my instinct was to put a star over it, to hide it, because I'm like, oh, that must be Vesta. So I'm, I'm hiding all of Tim's work, which uh, maybe isn't the best way to go about this, so I'll have to figure out. Okay, so... I swear eventually we'll get to working on the map and uh, questions and all that, but uh, a lot I want to cover uh, this time around, if uh, you can forgive me. So, I, I want to start uh, each stream uh, talking about some of the questions we got from the last stream, because there was a bunch, and I answered a few of them poorly. It's tough being put on the spot while trying to work, especially given the subject matter we're dealing with, which has to do with a lot of... Uh, complex topics. Someone asked me about that uh, paper hanging son of a bitch, briefly leader of Germany in the 40s, you know the one. So try talking about that guy on stream and not freaking out. But okay, one of the questions we got was, uh, who are the good guys in DOV? And at the time, I think I said my the answer was like America or the West or whatever I said. And I think that answer sucks. So here's my new answer. Uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's no real good guys in DOV in the same sense there's no good guys in real life. I mean, certainly some countries respect human rights more than others, some countries have, I don't know, higher standard of living, all these metrics we can use to, to tell how nice it is to live there, so if you use that to determine which side is the best, I guess the West and America and those countries would be the quote-unquote good guys. Uh, but I'm just not sure if you should be thinking about it uh, in those terms, because certainly you know, you can make the case that America was doing a lot of uh, sketchy shit during the Cold War, so that's hopefully my, my new answer. Uh, better than the last one? Maybe. Okay, so, I swear we're eventually going to jump into this, but I figured it might be a good idea to start with just a, a brief refresher on how uh, space travel works uh, in this setting. And I feel like I'm going to start most streams out the, with this explanation, and I'll refine it uh, as we go along. Presumably, the more I talk about this, the better I'll get at explaining it, right? Maybe? Alright, so... Star systems. There is one here. Oh man, I wish I was faster at this. This has already taken too long. <laughs> Mark, just make a circle, you can do it. Alright, star system. And another one, right? Actually, let's turn off all this stuff. Oh god, that's gross looking. How do I- Ah, oh, Jesus. This is already a disaster. Nope, alright, we're turning back at him. There we go. As I mentioned last stream, Illustrator, not my favorite tool. Alright, two star systems. One's over here, one's over there, right? I think we're all on the same page. Now, during the Big Bang, at the start of the universe, something happened. I don't know how to explain it. But, uh... In the aftermath of the Big uh, Bang, these things we're calling cosmic strings appeared all throughout the universe. And because cosmic strings are attracted to gravity, don't ask me how that works, we're still figuring out the science side of things, but because of something, we'll just call it gravity for now, cosmic strings just naturally line up between star systems. So that's lucky if you're trying to travel between uh, different uh, points in interstellar space. Of course, Travel 
is not instantaneous between these two systems. Rather, what these strings do is make warp travel easier. So technically, you can travel wherever you want throughout the Orion Arm, and there's nothing really stopping you. It's just a question of efficiency. So you can go from Dia Dia to Lalande, but it might take years, where Lalande to Delta to Sigma to Theta to there may be a few weeks. So that is the general uh, idea behind cosmic strings in, in DOV. It's kind of like hyperlanes in Star Wars or, or uh, Stellaris, but with a few extra little tricks. And one of those tricks is that not every cosmic string uh, is the same. So how do I express this? This is why I want to do this every stream, because I feel like I'm going to get better at, at getting all this stuff down as we go along. So, some cosmic strings, we'll call them the, the blue ones, they are like these ones. Cosmic strings, doing all those sorts of weird stuff. But then, there's other types. This one's a green one. And this one is a pink one. And this one is like a different shade of green. So what happens is, as each country is discovering these cosmic strings, they're sending out drones, they're, they're figuring out what's going on in the Sea of Clouds, they're doing all these things. But, because not every cosmic string is equal, and that some are blue, some are green, some are purple. And again, this is just a metaphor. These strings are not literally different colors. But because they're different in some sense, engines utilize them differently. So if American engines are predisposed towards blue strings, they'll go faster in blue strings, whereas Soviet engines might go faster on green strings. So what all this is essentially is just trying to come up with a travel system that makes things like it's possible to predict how long it's going to take to get from point A to point B, but we also have a bunch of wiggle room, so we're not driving ourselves insane trying to make sure that all the uh, all the travel time stuff works out 100% precisely. So that's the general idea. You can calculate how long it gets to it takes to get to some place, but there's wiggle room. Hopefully, I described that well. I'll describe it slightly better next week and maybe perfectly in a couple years. So that's where we're at. Uh, apart from that. Uh... I guess we're ready to uh, just jump into things here. And where do we want to start? Actually, that was a lot of explaining. Let's uh, let's go through the um, the super chats that we got while we were uh, while I was talking there. Apologies that I can't uh, get to these right as they come in, but uh, that was a lesson learned from last time. So, what do we got? Okay, Deviant Cage saying hi, much love from Australia. In the Dawn of Victory world, what happened to Australia and New Zealand? Did they form Oceania? Or, under the, or are they under the British Empire? This is still something we're figuring out. Um, Australia and New Zealand definitely still exist, but the name of the country and their status within it still in question. But we have already added a few uh, of the Orion Treaty Organization star systems to the map. So we got Terra Australis and a name I can't pronounce, and these are meant to be the two capitals of the uh, whatever it's called. Federation of Oceania, Imperial Federation, Australasia. These are all good examples of names that we might be calling this stuff. So, New Zealand and uh, Australia are in. But what they're in, hard to say. Okay. I think the system's working out well. I'm pretty pleased with uh, <laughs> how this uh, whole thing's coming together. Alright, another super chat. Let's go. Uh, the Laundry saying, have fun splitting up the Apollo cluster, still in all my minor nitpick got noticed. Okay, so what the Laundry is talking about here is, last stream, we created the uh, Draconis subcluster and the Apollo uh, subcluster. And our man, uh, the Laundry here, made this little image, and he said, <laughs> I think he said this was annoying the hell out of him, that all these names here are Roman, all these names are Roman, and yet we have one Greek name right in the middle, so we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be fixing that. Uh, the stream, basically, what we're gonna do is split it up. So these are all Greek and or Roman, and these are all the other one. So if these are all Greek, these are all Roman, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if something is annoying you about this map, uh, please let me know because chances are we uh, we can actually get to uh, fixing it. Okay, what else? Any more Super Chats I missed before you start moving along here? Yes, here we go. 
uh, national groups with intense rivalries should settle away from each other. For example, why would Pakistanis want to be anywhere near India? So I think there's a delicate balance here, right? Because on the one hand, we don't want the Orion arm to be like this weird replica of, of Earth where it's like, oh, how strange it is that all these nationalities ended up right beside each other, just like in, in real life. But on the other hand, uh, because of the history of this universe, it does make sense that Pakistan and India, for example, would be settling in the same place if they're both reliant on the United Kingdom or whoever it was for the jump drives or whatever we're calling them that got them into this cluster. And my my thinking there is just because, you know, two nationalities have a rivalry now in this timeline doesn't mean they necessarily will in the future. And I don't think it's appropriate to suggest that, you know, Pakistan and India have to be kept apart because they're just not capable of getting along. I don't believe that. So I think in some cases you'll see rivalries that continue into the future. For example, we have a uh, modern incarnation of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth situated between Germany and Russia. Like that is history not repeating but rhyming, right? On the other hand, we have something like this where history repeats but in a different way. So. I hope all that makes sense. Uh, sometimes history repeats, sometimes it doesn't. Nothing's set in stone. Yeah, I think I made that sense. I mean, that made made sense. Yeah, all right, yeah, sure, let's go for it. Okay, so let's actually get to uh, designing this map here and then we'll come back to any and all questions that we get uh, later on. So last time we were working on the local cluster, Indian Arm, and the Amazonia cluster. I want to start things off a little differently. One of the main questions we keep getting is where are all the different countries? So I'm going to start uh, naming these uh, different regions. So we got the Amazonia cluster here. We got the Duanga Deeps, the Sea of Clouds. Let's add one for the Italians. Right there. And I'll try not to look up names too much during the middle of the stream because no one wants to listen to me type, but this is the Mare Nostrum, whatever the Italians called the Mediterranean. RC, Mare, Mare Nostrum. Yeah. There it is, the Mare Nostrum. And once that's done, we got the Argentine arm. A lot of the uh, South American countries ended up in this corner of the galaxy. So we got Brazil around here, Argentina around here, and then, you know, Chile, Colombia, Venezuela, and all the rest of those fine South American fellows will be in this kind of uh, general area around here. Okay, uh, apart from that, Argentine, Mare Nostrum. You know what? I said I wasn't going to do any bounties right away, but let's put out our first bounty. So. I need a name for this thing. It is some sort of stellar nursery, pretty close to Earth. This is like the first major wonder of the Orion Arm that uh, humanity encountered upon breaking out into the uh, into space here. So, if you do have that document handy, and they'll be relying on somebody to kind of set this up, but if someone wants to make a section, we'll just call it Bounty Number One, Red Nebula, and uh, give me some suggestions. What I'm kind of thinking here is because this is like a stellar nursery, I'm thinking something related to like a forge, or a hearth, or a uh, like a fire maybe, or um, I don't know, something that creates heat that creates something from that. That that was kind of my original thinking. Preferred, uh, we name it after something from, from history or religion or philosophy or, or something. We're, we're not just making up names here. Like, I don't want to call this, like, the Great Red Scar or some shit. So, hopefully there is a link. I'll put another one in chat there. If you have any ideas, uh, put them in that document. And, God willing, I will organize and get to that uh, for the next stream. Okay, so, that's that. As for Brazil, let's really get uh, Brazil figured out. And like I said, I'm not going to worry about names just yet, because that slows things down too much. So what I want to do is kind of track the original route of the American ships, because... How do I do stuff? Yeah. Uh, the Americans kind of went this way. And so Brazil and South America region 
basically is coming off the string that the Americans found. So the, the big super highway is this thing, and then uh, everyone else is kind of stuck to these smaller tributaries. So, let's get that main highway actually going on right now. So let's maybe have this here. I kind of like the idea of the path following. It's going across this bridge here, it goes down here, and then at some point it's gonna like split off and head in this direction. Oh, so I've been talking too much. I need a drink, oh my lord. There we are. Uh, Major Lance of the Wolf was asking, did America survive? Yes, America survived. Sorry, I'm just getting these random questions that I need to answer. But I will get to the Super Chats uh, next break. Actually, this little area right here is really interesting looking. Like, what if there was like a... Like an independent cluster right around here? Something like that. Yeah. Again, these names are just temporary. There is not going to be a whole bunch of uh, star systems called independent. I just don't want to have to do a bunch of research on stream where you just hear me talk or typing and nothing interesting is happening. All right, something like that. So it's going to kind of come down to there. Yeah. I always want to get this stuff perfectly on stream. It drives me nuts. But I know I should be waiting to do that until after the stream. All right, yep, what can you do? Close enough. So we go there. So then the question is, if this is the main route the Americans took, where did Brazil kind of hop off? Where was their stop? Like, did they jump out from here or did they jump out from there? I think they jumped out from the bottom because that looks cooler. But let's keep working on the highway for now. Something like this maybe. Again, Illustrator, not my uh, best program, so I'm gonna be making a bunch of mistakes, and the plan is to just fix everything off stream, so we're not wasting time. But we'll see how that goes. The question is, does this look too fake, where we have all these like really long jumps? Yeah, I don't actually like the look of that. What if this was, like, more in here? Chat saying it looks fake, okay. You know what, to hell with the highway, let's work on Brazil. We'll come back to that. Sometimes you hit a rut immediately. <laughs> Alright, but I like this area here for kind of the heart of Brazil in the same way that this was the heart of India. Maybe like right there is the capital. Actually, that's a mark that is for now. Brazil, capital. So how many star systems does India have? Right now they got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So India and Brazil are both great powers. We've kind of established that 12 minimum is the number of star systems that a great power would have. And I think India has plenty more. So probably between 12 to 36 star systems in Brazil. Yeah, that looks cool. Just hit smooth, I don't know what that does. It's 
Something like that. You know what? This thing is annoying me still. I want to get back to this. Let's actually try something different. If it went like this. So, well, I like having star systems very close together in these little clusters. I think it makes it look very nice. So let's really lean into that. Something like this, maybe. Okay, so the Americans, they go to Tau Ceti, Lalande, Sigma, to these systems here. And I like the look of this area here, so I feel like this is like an important junction. And then the Americans keep going this way, but then Brazil goes this way. So... I always like putting star systems around, like, features in the art that make it look cool, but that can make things look too fake. So let's put some around this inlet here. This kind of patch looks kind of interesting. Maybe just like... DM you illustrator, I swear to God. <laughs> I'll get it eventually, just give me 20 minutes. I also don't love that it's getting put in the wrong thing. Hey, there we go. Like I said, and like you'll be hearing over and over throughout these streams, illustrator, not my main deal. I'm a Photoshop man. Illustrator sickens me. But I, I kind of like this, this system here being like this big kind of jumping off point to get into the Amazonia cluster. The route in may be not necessarily that good, but at some point Brazil found a, uh, what am I doing? A series of good runs. I feel like a lot of these lines are a bit too long for now. Like it, I like the look of, of this section a lot better than this section so far, so we're gonna have to refine that later on. For now, though... Okay, there we go. Something like this. I hate the look of this. <laughs> I'm gonna focus on the Brazil cluster some more. Rather than the entrance into it. Got these four systems here. We definitely need something like on the edge, kind of getting them a bit closer back into the local cluster. So I feel like Brazil probably has this whole area here. Maybe, I don't know. That area. But I also feel like they got this really close cluster right around here. 
I think that looks cool. So let's get some start. And I'm uh, not ignoring these super chats, by the way. Just trying to focus on, on the work, and then we'll get into those in just a second. So I appreciate everyone who's been uh, donating. It helps keep the lights on and this project funded. So very much appreciate it. I just wish I knew why Illustrator wasn't saving my opacity settings. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. I like that. Does Brazil have a bunch of star systems kind of floating out into the void here? Maybe, but not quite yet. Right there. Yeah, okay. Something like this. I still don't like this section here. This is not working for me. Is it just because of the lines, or do I not like the star placement either? Something like that, and then it kind of... Like, maybe it goes in here that. I kind of like this dynamic a lot, actually, where we got this kind of gap in the middle. Something like that. Again, I'm trying not to get, like, super OCD in how I, uh, <laughs> get everything to line up. I'll save that for after the stream, but I can only do so much before my brain demands that I do this. Okay, so I think this is actually looking pretty good. I like this kind of cluster here, and then I like that it just jumps off to here. So I think there needs to be, like, a cluster around here, maybe. Also, did I spell Brazil wrong? Why does that look wrong to me? Z-I-L in all uppercase doesn't look right. Something like that. Yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, that is looking kind of slick. I like that a lot. Okay, let's uh, let's get back to some super chats because I have missed quite a few while I've been talking here. Where are we? Where are we? The last one we did was about New Zealand, I think. Okay. Mr. Iron Knight asking, is there a decolonization movement such as, and personal pan-African movements with new political polities such as the reform? Yeah, so can't speak about the names of any countries because that's still all in flux. If you go to the uh, Donna Victory wiki though, the link hopefully just popped up in chat, there is a page there called um, Astropolitics, I think, and it has a list of all the, con or the, all the current countries in Donna Victory uh, organized by power. So, can't remember if Ethiopia is in there. I mean, it's certainly it's in the universe. I'm just not sure if it's on the wiki yet. But yes, Ethiopia is in Mali. I'm not sure if they're in 
identically or if they've been reformed into something else. Um, but as for decolonization movements and pan-African movements, yes, all these things exist. Uh, decolonization is a big one, and it's also kind of linked to uh, the pan-African movement. So the idea is there is something called the African Federation, uh, not a country in its own right. Also, I'm still messing up uh, trying to get my pop-up working there. Oh, well, whatever. Um, so the African Union exists, and it's basically a supranational union. Or not necessarily a union, uh, but an organization that links together every colony in the Orion Arm with African ancestry or a large uh, percentage of its population originating from Africa. So that's that's kind of that whole idea. And, uh, yeah, if the African Union truly united, it would be a superpower, but it's too divided at current, and it's kind of being split apart by the superpowers for their own machinations. Alrighty. Next super chat, what do we got? Uh, Burke Barnett, and thank you all so much for these uh, super chats, by the way. So much, uh, very much appreciated. Uh, don't be afraid of putting systems on features in the map. Use the star map geography to help decide where to put things. I know last year, Mister didn't want to, but I think it would be fine. Yeah, I agree. I just, I feel bad when when Tim, you know, adds his little details, and my instinct is to immediately cover it up. Uh, so, hey, nature of the beast, right? Maybe we got to put out like a text list version of this map just so you can see all the all the good stuff. Okay. Any other super chats I missed? Yes. Maybe. Big Dog Henry, thank you for the super chat, saying Latin countries independent, or are they under the umbrella of a larger nation? And so, what are some other countries also under American influence? Um, not sure, actually. I know that uh, Brazil and Argentina exist, for sure. So whether the rest of the South American nations have their own independent states still, like maybe there's still an independent Chile or Venezuela, whatever, Uruguay, Paraguay, or maybe there is some sort of third option where there's now the, you know, the union of South America, except for Argentina and Brazil. So yeah, a few different options there. I'm, I, I guess the answer is I'm not sure. And that's a, a question we'll be answering as we get to this map. Um, I think there should be a mix, personally. I'd like to see a, a bit of, like, maybe Venezuela still exists, for example, but other countries have united. Just, a uh, not one or the other. Okay, anything else before I... Oh, yeah, jeez, a lot of them. Okay, thank you all so much, guys. Very much appreciate it. Uh, are anarchists a thing in DOV? Yes. To save yourself some money, uh... If it's real in the real world, like if it exists in the real world as a concept, it probably exists in DOV and has been dialed to 11. So yes, uh, anarchists are a thing. And every now and then, a group of them will try to found a colony somewhere, and it always goes terribly. Or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. There's uh, there's some cool socialist anarchist movements that would be neat to uh, incorporate into the setting here. So yes, they're a thing. I don't know how they function yet. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, you can come in from System 1 up for Brazil. I feel like this was very specific to something I was saying at the time. I'm not sure what this means now, but I appreciate the, the super chat. Thanks so much. Alright, what do we got? What do we got? Oh my god, they keep coming. Okay, sorry, folks. We'll get back to map making in just a second, but this is what's keeping the lights on. And also, these questions are good. Uh, Mason E, I got a question about the aesthetics in the Firebase Hector video. It looks like they have some mid to Cold War kit when I zoomed in. Is that the general aesthetics of the setting? Uh, no. So, uh, Firebase Hector, I got uh, actually some stuff to say about that, but I'll save that for a future video. Um, the idea there was to keep all the soldiers and whatnot kind of... Kinda hard to make out some of the finer details because we need to come in and design the kit uh, for all these soldiers, and that's actually something we're working on now. So, Firebase Hector, take that not with a grain of salt, but you're seeing a very specific aspect of the U.S. Army. Like all those guys in that image are off-duty, hanging around. They're probably not dressed up in their full full battle rattle, as they would say. Also, I am not doing a good job of pressing these buttons in the right order, so I'm supposed to press this button first, which doesn't work half the time. There we go. 
Joshua, JN asking, how will artificial gravity work for spaceships? Will there be gravity generators or similar to the Expanse? So, I know the hard sci-fi crowd, they really love doing that thing where there's like segments of the ship that rotate around to create artificial gravity. I think Babylon 5 did that with the Omega class or some shit. I don't know. I don't get too hung up on the science side of things. I just like, I figure out how I want things to work and then I backtrack from there to figure out what's the scientific explanation that gets us there. Some people do the opposite. I don't think one way is better than the other, but uh, gravity exists. I don't know how it works. It's probably just that thing where they're putting an electrical charge through a alloy that creates gravity. I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but uh, yes, it, it is a thing. And there's no spinning hull things because I think it looks kind of dumb. So, one man's opinion. And one last super chat before we head back to editing here. Do the Nordics slash Scandinavia exist in DOV? Yes, they do. Uh, I am not sure if they have been added to the wiki, but, uh, oh, they're not on the map yet, but they are somewhere around here. Uh, Germany is over here. The U.S. is over here. Nordics, somewhere around there. Okay, I think it's everybody. There we go. So, back to the editing. Okay, so, what do we got? Brazil. I want to kind of develop more of this kind of segment here. That's looking pretty sick. Although, how many star systems are we up to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 star systems. That's fine. I think we'll add just a few more. I kind of want to get them all connected up here, so I gotta have a segment that links them. Something like that. Something like this. Oh, and uh, Mazuyuki Okuro saying, I, I pronounced your name wrong, I'm so sorry, saying, I sent a super chat. If I missed it, I am really sorry about that. Let me quickly. Oh, here we go. My apologies. Are Jap are, is Japan modern or imperial? Uh, it's imperial, but in, in Dawn of Victory, we're not simply taking these nations as they existed in the 1930s and catapulting them into space. So Japan is technically the, uh, you know, the Empire of Japan, Imperial Japan, with a military government similar to how it existed in the 1930s, but with 200 years of advancement. So it's not a direct one-to-one. -one. It has evolved slightly. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for the Super Chat. Sorry I missed it that first time around. All right, back, back to editing for real, for real this time. Okay, so Brazil, here we are. Maybe, okay, so do I, do I like this kind of line I got going here? No, I don't. What did I do here? I grouped them all together? No. So what if it went more like upwards, like so? And then kind of down. Like that? Does that look good? Eh, it's okay. Don't love it. Let's try a few different options here. Does, does this look better? Hmm. This highway still looks too fake, but I like the top of Brazil, so we'll stick with that. Okay, so... Does the capital connect directly to this next cluster over? Maybe it does. That would be an important line. Except I keep adding this to the wrong layer. Something, no, that's too long. That looks too weird. Hmm. 
<laughs> well, let's get this cluster working out. Like so. But then how do these two link? That is the question. At least this music's not freaking me out. This is nice and soothing. Although I can't tell why this is selecting so much. I don't understand, Illustrator. Why is it so big? Yeah, seriously, what's going on here? Why is this... Huh. I don't get it, but that's Illustrator for you. Can't be uh, bargained with. Is it just that simple? Like, it goes from there to there? Or maybe, like, dives in here? Yes, maybe it does dive in there. In fact, I think I just broke this case wide open. So what if that goes there? And then this is like there. So, yeah, I kind of like that a lot better. This line here still kind of feels weird, but it seems better for the, the main way into the Amazonia cluster to go to from there, there, right to the capital, rather than kind of meandering off the side here. And I also like the capital being the link to this subcluster as opposed to the subcluster. Yeah, I think I think this is good. I'm talking too much, but I, th I think this looks good. And then what do we got? Something like this, perhaps. God of my witness, I cannot figure out Illustrator. Just let me do this. There we go. I think that's looking pretty slick. I still I feel like this looks a little fake to me. I don't know why. I mean, it's all pretty fake, but... Uh... I think it's because it doesn't look like a cool independent zone yet. Yeah, it looks too half finished. Yeah, it looks good. I feel like we need more independent stuff around here, though. This is actually a cool area. I feel like this is like a big trading center. Maybe there's like a few minor nations hanging out around here. A few colonial powers, perhaps. As in, you know, former colonies. Let's get some more independent star systems in here. That's kind of cool. Yes. That's looking good. So 
so just to give you a kind of a, a sense of what's actually happening in this map as opposed to just lines and, and circles. So we're not just putting star systems on the map, right? We're, we're kind of creating geopolitical rivalries, geopolitical relationships. So the local cluster as it stands is kind of like a open book. There's not a lot, uh, not a lot of nuance to it, I guess. So open cluster in terms of its geopolitics. At the center, we have Alpha Centauri, which is a great power. Many people think it could be a superpower in the uh, near term. We got Sirius and Tau Ceti. These are regional powers in the local cluster. Uh, then we got a bunch of smaller colonies on Dia Dia. Maybe there's a few throughout the uh, Apollo subcluster. And then we have Vesta, which is another regional power, maybe middle power. Then great powers alongside Alpha Centauri are India and Brazil. So that's kind of the current dynamic. And We've established the uh, Draconis subcluster as kind of this uh, big trading zone. This is one of the most important choke points in the entire Orion arm. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's connect those. This right here is like the crossroads of the Orion arm. Uh, so Sigma, Theta, and Delta Draconis, full of space stations, full of anchorages, full of places to. I don't know, top off on gas and booze before I head out. Uh, Apollo subcluster is still working on the kind of the vibe here, but the general premise is dominated by Vesta, except India's moving in. And I'm about to cough, so I'm going to mute myself for a second. Yeah. So that's the basic uh, framework I got so far. And I kind of like the idea of another subcluster existing uh, somewhere around here. Although compared to our other clusters, it seems kind of spread out. Yeah, like that. And that seems a bit too far out, but I do like having... I keep thinking of this in terms of, like, nautical maps, where these are, like, islands out in the water. One of the original directions for the map was uh, that this part is kind of... Uh, you know when Finding Nemo, when Nemo at the start, he's in, like, that, uh, that cool part of the ocean with the coral and the, the manta ray school bus? I swear I have a point here. This isn't just me rambling. Finding Nemo, he starts off in like the, the comfortable part of the, the ocean and then later he leaves the reef and he's on his own or whatever. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but uh, this part of the map is supposed to resemble your, your friendly local coral reef. And then it gets scarier the further you get out. Unless you're in America, in which case you got the best part of the galaxy. But uh, yeah, further out here, stuff gets weird, baby. Stuff gets weird. Okay, so I, I, I like the look of this independent zone more and more. Like, that's pretty cool. We need names for them, so that's gonna be another thing I gotta put out a bounty for or come up with some stuff on my own, but, uh... Fuck it, let's keep going. I'm, I'm kind of really into this, <laughs> this whole area here. Except... I'm not sure if I like this spot anymore. Maybe it connects this way. Something like that. Because of the nature of this universe, the uh, biggest thing I gotta watch out for is accidental swastikas. Because with all these lines and stuff, man, it could happen. And that would be real bad. You spend 50 minutes talking about how you want to handle ideology in a complex, nuanced, and appropriate way. But then you accidentally make a swastika and a space map, you're done. Means nothing. So what if I went like this? Sorry, I'm just kind of brainstorming here while I'm talking. Yeah, 
All right, maybe that maybe that's it. Maybe this is just uh Maybe maybe that's it for now. Okay. Okay, just saved the map so we're good there. That's something. How is Brazil looking? Brazil is looking good. Except I gotta attach this uh, island off by itself. Yeah, okay, if we have anyone from Brazil in chat, if this was the shape of your country in space, would you feel satisfied? Or is this offensive in some way? Yeah, that looks cool. Hopefully I muted myself before I nearly choked to death there. Okay. Now the question is, how did they get to the Sea of Clouds? They probably... here the Americans definitely got lucky with a long ass string but was it this one was is the question and is it too dramatic if the entrance to the sea of clouds comes out of the uh, the great purple space hole that also needs a name Like if it kind of worked out like that, would that does that look too too uh too coincidental? I don't know, I think it kinda of looks neat. But that's probably too long. If there was a cosmic string that long, that would be the most important section of the entire galaxy, so probably should Make it a little less pronounced. How about like this? Or maybe it leads to this kind of lagoon looking thing. Yes, I like that. And then goes here yes it does and then there's like a cluster of, of planets like in this kind of cloud around here but the main connection the important one goes there let's say for now again none of this is really set in stone we're gonna be editing the space map for the next hundred years so if we need to make a change, I'm not going to freak too much about it. Something like that. Yeah, okay. I think that's good enough for now, at least. As long as I have like a basic sense of how uh, the Western powers got into the Sea of Clouds. That is probably good enough, because the idea is we're going to be building out the uh, the longest cosmic strings first, right? So the long ones are this one. Actually, I said at the start that cosmic strings were different colors, right? Or at least color coded. So I feel like the American... Wait, that's still blue. Why is that? Or that's not blue. Why is it... Uh... Yeah, so the American cosmic string, the one they're best at, traveling down was this one was this one yes why does it keep doing that how come I can never get my star lines to follow the same 
opacity, but when I don't want it to do that, it does it. Like, why is it doing that? Okay, the point is the Americans went this way and the Soviets and Japanese went that way. Germans went north. I think we've covered this before. But actually, a uh, good question in chat here. Uh, that I just lost. Yes, there we go. Uh, Dr. E.M.M.I. Martinez asking, will these routes have special names? I kind of do like the idea of that because if you're a trader or a convoy captain or whatever, I feel like there's got to be ways to describe the different routes. Like, are you going down the Draconis run or the Epsilon Eridani run? So yes, they will have names. I just haven't thought of them yet. And also, I forgot to hide that. There we go. Oh, Lord. Apologies, I'll do my best to get to the, the questions that pop up here, but I'm mostly focusing on the map, so I'm not really paying attention to, to chat too much. Except I don't like this area still. This feels like too much like a claw, you know? And clusters in DOV are normally a lot closer together, so this doesn't look right. like that. I, I do like the look of that better. You kind of want the, the longer cosmic strings to be rare, because those are the pathways everyone's kind of hunting for, but they shouldn't be everywhere, so that looks better to me, I think. Yes. Okay. That's coming together. So let's do the same thing for India while we're here. All right, so how do you get into the Indian arm? Do you go through this independent system in this direction or are you going up through here or could you come in through there no it has to be from the bottom because uh, the Indians in this universe used Soviet FTL drives which were best at this cosmic string so they would have probably come up from the bottom not the top Uh, yeah. So I guess it has to be one of these two. Either Vesta or this independent place links up to the, the Indian arm. Well, let's make the call. Let's do this one. And we'll give this a temporary name. Then we also need a bunch of um, independent colonies kind of in this area. Vesta in the lore is supposed to be a uh, regional power, so it needs some room to, to have influence. Something like that. Yeah, don't hate that. What if it was... Is it 
connecting directly to Vesta, I guess it is. Sold, finally. I feel like this is the right way to do it, because before, when I was getting hung up on, on names, it was slowing the progress down too much, because I was having to like look up Wikipedia every single time we put down a new star system. But I feel like this way, put down a bunch of Brazil systems, take suggestions, and then next session, next week, one week today, we come back to this with our list of Brazil names, and we start going through and we decide what stuff's being called what. I feel like that's a good way to go about this. Still not sure about this area. Does India connect through Vesta? No, no it doesn't. We need to make it a bit harder for India and Brazil to interact with um, the local cluster. So if India wants to do it, they gotta go all the way down here. And if Brazil wants to do it, they gotta go through here. And the reason is we don't want either of these countries to be too uh, able to effortlessly dominate the local cluster. There needs to be a reason why it took them a bit to, to start pushing their weight around. So that's kind of my thinking. These, these two areas need to be a little more remote uh, from the center. Okay. Well, I can't think of anything, so that means it's probably time to uh, take some questions. Let's go back to the, uh, the super chats here. What do we got next? Uh, all right. Uh, Veronica Hamilton, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, what is the status of languages in the Orion Arm? Are there any auxiliary languages like Esperanto uh, considered a conlang for the background? So I am no no Tolkien. Uh, I am not a language guy. It's completely beyond me. I have no no head for languages. So probably going to keep things simple. Uh, I'm certainly not going to try to construct my own language. I, I that's that's too much for me. And also, is 200 years is that enough time for a new? dialect to, to kind of spring out of nowhere? Maybe. I'm not sure, though. But uh, that's that's a good question. Probably a lot of new slang, at the very least. I mean, realistically, I feel like language should be pretty different in, in 200 years, but I don't want to have to deal with that. So, yeah. There are still languages, but uh, nothing, nothing too crazy. And what else do we got next? And, okay, what do we got? Uh, I meant you can enter Amazonia cluster from the independent system under the A when you were struggling with the entrance for Brazil. Happy to donate again to explain to you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, sorry. Try to include as much context in, in the Super Chats as it can. I know that the, the dollar limit doesn't always make that easy. So you were saying enter the Amazonia cluster from the independent system under the A. And I moved some stuff around. But does this kind of line up for what you're currently thinking? Sorry, I'll have to check chat again when it's... Uh, once we're done here, but I, I think this is kind of close to what you were thinking. Sorry. Not always able to to be too uh, on the Johnny on the spot here. Okay, who's next? Also, note for next stream. I gotta have it so this thing doesn't automatically stop when it's done, because uh, that's killing me. Austin Laplante, La Laplante? Uh, what have the French been up to? What power block are they a part of? So technically, uh, France is a part of the OTO or the Orion Trade Organization, but you know France, man, they gotta go their own way. So they are uh, pursuing their own separate policy, separate from OTO. Uh, if you were to select one country that's the most likely to leave OTO, it would be France, but uh, only because they don't want to be bossed around by Americans, and really, can you blame them? So France is in here, and they're gonna have a bunch of star systems in this area. So yeah, France is a thing, part of the OTO, but uh, 
they're not always thrilled about it. And what do we got here? How large is the population of the Orion Arm? Uh, that's a good question. That's another thing we got to figure out. So, haven't come up with any solid numbers yet. I like the idea of the Orion Arm heading towards 100 billion humans. So, if you were to open up a newspaper in 2289, there would be an article saying, 100 billion people, only a few years away. So we're like, we're on the, we're on the precipice, like we're heading towards it. Is that realistic? Uh, I don't know. I, I've seen so many people um, give estimates on uh, what the world population is going to be in the year 2300. It's between like 10 billion or 6 billion or 100 billion. It's all over the place. Um, but for the size of conflicts and the size of nations we want in Dawn of Victory, I feel like 100 billion is just a nice even number that we can build off of. So I'm going to say 100 billion. And then we'll see if that's, like, realistic for, uh, I don't know, demographics. And if it's completely batshit insane, then we won't worry about it. Or we'll, you know, reduce the number. But, uh, you know, I, I do like 100, 100 billion. Okay. And uh, how much do you take... Oh, sorry, this is from... Oh, man, I cannot pronounce anybody's names. Marcio Tarno? Mar... Mar this is from Jim... He says, how much do you take into account the state of the countries at the arrival of the Synfaxi for their evolution afterwards? Those times of Argentina were very important and are called the infamous decade now. Yeah, that's a, this is a super good question. Uh, obviously, we've got to take it into account quite a bit. Like, we're not simply taking countries as they existed now or in the 1930s or at any one point in time and just putting them into space. It's all about seeing where they were starting from, trying to figure out something that kind of makes sense as to where they're progressing, and then, you know adding 200 years of sci-fi history. So yeah, I, I don't actually know much about Argentina in the 1930s, so I'll have to look into that once we uh, get into uh, that in detail. And uh, Iki Mursu saying, will there be space ICBMs? Yes, except they would be interstellar, in, wait, I, ISBMs? Interstellar ballistic missiles? Inter-system ballistic missiles? Yes, but they're not called ICBMs, or maybe they still are, I'm not sure. But uh, there are weapons that can travel between star systems. But the problem is, whenever a, a ship jumps into a new star system, it like it's like pinging on sonar, like a an FTL jump lights up every sensor you have. So even if you were to FTL jump a nuke or whatever into a star system, whoever is in that star system has a huge heads up. So ICBMs are not the planet killing weapons they are uh, in our world simply because you have more heads up and more planets all right so uh elliot canada saying oh i keep losing the background hey at least it's partially working uh, elliot canada saying uh red stars are numerous and ancient i think it would make a great bounty for alien ruins so you're saying there's probably alien ruins in whatever we call this thing Okay, good to know. I will add that to the list of things to consider. I don't know what, like, I'm not a science guy. I, I like science fiction, but I guess mostly the, the fiction part of it, because I don't know that much about stars. I used to. Not anymore. Okay, what else do we got? Uh, Vesta as an Indian proxy state that acts as a buffer. Probably. Um, <clears throat> back in the 2220s, 2250s, there was a, a few wars for the local cluster called the Solar Wars. And uh, it ends with a country we haven't really focused on yet called Vega. That's around here somewhere. And what the Solar Wars do is they kind of remove the possibility of any non-legacy nation kind of being a commanding power in the local cluster. So Alpha Centauri, Vesta, Tau Ceti, Sirius, and Vega all kind of wanted to lead the local cluster. Didn't work out. And now India and Brazil are set to dominate with Alpha Centauri kind of in the middle. Okay. Uh, Bob Billy, is the 10,000 of Brazil or of, of Berlin still a canon event? I always like the idea of the classic villains getting a classic hero movement. Uh, so if you don't know what this is in reference to, um, in the early version of the Dawn of Victory setting, uh, the mod for Sins of a Slower Empire, we had this bit of lore called the 10,000 of Berlin. And it was the story about how 
I'm going off my, off my memory here, so apologies if I get this wrong. But it was the the idea was during the evacuation of Earth, during the final days when shit was really going down, the last cities are falling to the Synfaxi, the world's ending. It's it's done. We're we're at the the last kind of hurrah here. Um, that Germany would send 10,000 people to Berlin as this kind of like last stand Battle of Thermopylae propaganda thing. So the idea was they send in 10,000 people to Berlin, they get killed by the Synfaxi, and as soon as the last person dies, uh, the nukes go off and Earth is destroyed. So I, I, I do like that story, but I, I was thinking about this for some reason, and the problem with that story, the way that it existed in DOV Classic, is that we played it completely straight. Like, the Germans got their big propaganda moment, right? But what we didn't focus on is, like, if you actually just focus on what that story means, that is, you know, the German Reich committing human sacrifice for propaganda purposes, like, sacrificing 10,000 people just so they can say they did it. And maybe those people are willing, maybe they're fanatics, but uh, the short answer to your question is the 10,000 of Berlin is still in, but it is going to be treated in a lot... It's It's... The reality of what happened in those final days is very different from what the Germans tell you happened. So the German account of the 10,000 is the propaganda version where it's this heroic last stand. What actually happened is uh, really, really bad and the Germans don't want that getting out. So I uh, hope that makes sense. I know that's a bit of a scattered answer. Uh, what else do I got here? Uh, Joshua JN asking, will there be anything akin to modern stealth technologies in this universe? And if so, will only fighters have it or can larger warships have it too? Again, I'm not a science guy. I know people have a lot of really strong opinions on whether or not stealth is viable in space or not. I think it is. And I say that based on nothing because I'm not a scientist. But uh, stealth is going to be a thing, but it's not stealth, I think. I don't know. Maybe it'll work this way. But I think the way it's going to work is that it's not stealth in the traditional sense of you can't see them, but you can't target them. So stealth in DOV is you know they're there, you just can't get a lock because of, you know, ECM or ECCM or whatever the case might be. So I hope that's a good answer. And what do I got here? Uh, other forms of FTL travel like wormholes, etc. Uh, probably not. No. That, I don't know why, it feels a bit too sci-fi to me. Um, aliens is kind of my my guiding something or other, and it, to have like wormhole travel would just feel kind of too weird. I don't know. It's a good question. I'm not entirely against it, but um, probably not. I, I just don't think you're that lucky, you know? Like, what are the chances that not only a wormhole is in our local area of space, but it heads to somewhere that's convenient. Seems seems too weird to me. Like maybe there's a wormhole that exists, but it gets it from like there to there and nobody cares or something. I don't know. We'll think about that. That's a good question. Uh, include a dense cluster, a fortress cluster. So in most cases, you wouldn't have an entire cluster being dedicated to, to being a fortress. Like this isn't 40K in that sense, but choke points are, are super important. Um, Although maybe there should be a fortress. Like there's definitely like a bunch of platforms in the Draconis subcluster, right? Because like this is the most important. Maybe there are fortress clusters. I might have talked my, myself into this. I'll, I'll say this. Some clusters are strategically important and fortifying them would be a smart idea. What that actually looks like in practice, who knows? And uh, number cool asking, speaking of aliens, any ruined megastructures? Yes. But I can't talk about it. Sorry. <laughs> um, there is secret stuff going on in the background of the Orion Arm, and we've been fleshing it out a lot, so we can hint at it right from the get-go. But uh, yes, there are ruined megastructures. That's all I can say. All right, I've been doing a lot of super chats. I'll, I'll try to just get some regular questions if anybody... Uh, Cole Young, Wombat.user, asking, is bro ever going to read normal chat? Yes, thank you for the question. Unfortunately, that was the only one we could answer from the non-super chat pool, so that was it. Uh, 
Are there any human groups that have mutated to become something different, like ab humans in 40k? Ah, uh, not really. I'm not really super into that whole kind of thing. I want to keep this pretty grounded. So, no. In fact, probably the opposite. I would say that um, genetic counseling has gotten really good by 2300, so before you're born, your parents are probably messing with your genes, making sure that you're all set to go. Like in Gattaca. You know that movie Gattaca? World OP asking, will there be any good places to get Chinese food? Some, someone's furious right now because I'm answering this question as opposed to like a serious question. Uh, yes, but not in... What, what country doesn't have good Chinese food? Not in Canada? No, we have good Chinese food. I don't know. Yes, there's good Chinese food. All right, rapid fire time. How does interstellar trade work? Works great. Has anyone landed on Earth since the new king like to study it? Yes. Uh, certain groups are permitted to land on Earth, including like pilgrims. Like if you have a very strong connection to humanity's birthplace, you can petition to uh, go to the solar system, but you can't land. Nobody gets to land uh, on Earth. It is completely quarantined. The best you're going to get is a ship in orbit and you can look down on it. But uh, only the superpowers and Alpha Centauri are allowed on Earth. Don't ask them what they're doing because they're not going to tell you. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, have any other planets in Sol been terraformed or is the whole system off limits? No, no other planets have been terraformed. Uh, even now, I'm not sure if they would have the technology to terraform Mars or Venus. It might be beyond humanity still. The only reason we have so many planets scattered across the Orion arm is because mysteriously there are a bunch of planets that were just kind of waiting around. Can't talk about that too much either, but uh, no, the only, there's no permanent colony in Seoul. There's just some space stations being run by Alpha Centauri uh, and the superpowers. Uh, will the Draconis subcluster be a trade hub? Yes, it is. Uh, big major trade hub right there. Uh, what happened to Greece and Donna Victory? Good question. Probably part of the German or the Axis sphere, I should say. It's definitely independent. There is an independent Greek state, but it's probably in the Axis. Sorry, that's some bad news for you. That sucks. All right, but I got to get back to... Uh... Okay, a few more. Can we switch the C's for K's and some of the name? No, we can't. Uh, C is better than K. Uh, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? And uh, have there been attempts to weaponize this infaxia by human factions or other attempts to spread it? Yes. Can't talk about it. Sorry, guys. You're asking, like, really good questions, and I, I don't want to ruin the, the story before it's even out, you know? So. Uh, what are the British doing in DOV? The British are hanging out right around here. So we added um, the capitals of the Oto nations. These are still temporary. So New London, that's a reference to Freelancer. Isle de France is a reference to old DOB, but I kind of like Isle de France. I, I might, uh, or Isle de France, Isle, Isle, Isle de F I like this name. New California, that's a reference to uh, Fallout, uh, New Vegas. But I don't hate New California, so maybe that'll stick around too. Uh, Philadelphia, also a placeholder. I don't hate the name, but it's not, I, I'm not in love with it. And then lastly, we got the uh, Australia and New Zealand capitals. Again, all temporary names, so don't get uh, too hung up on anything until you see it in the wiki. And uh, Alexandria Codex saying, will you kindly correct the spelling of Bernard Star to Bernard Star? Yeah, someone mentioned this that I spelled it wrong at the start of the last stream and I forgot about it the entire time. So there you go. Now it is spelt correctly, and we never need to hear about the Menard Star ever again. Nah, I'm just kidding. Can you imagine? All right. I think that's good. Let's uh, let's get back to the old adding star system, shall we? I feel like we made a lot of progress. This is like looking pretty sweet. I'm, I'm liking this a lot. Okay, so I kind of want to work on the Vesta area and connect it to India. Just not sure how best to do that. I think it's probably going to work like this. I think the main route into India is this way. 
I think they got a secondary route in here. That's not as good because you got to go through all these star systems just to get to the Apollo subcluster. Whereas you can go like right there. And they probably have a third entrance that's also not as good. Somewhere around there. Did I still get an? Oh my god! See, I joked about getting it wrong, and then I still got it wrong. But wait, did I get it wrong? Bernard's. I'm, I'm typing this out. Bernard's star. Ah, oh, there's an R in there. What a coward. Bart Bernard's. But oh no, that doesn't make sense. Okay, well that's on me. But uh, fuck you, Bernard. You've made this a living nightmare for me. I see. Who, who was Bernard? Bernard was an American astronomer, E.E. E. Bernard. Okay. Oh, he discovered the high proper motion of Bernard's star. I just don't think Bernard is good enough to have an entire star named after him, especially one that's so prominent. So maybe Bernard's star gets renamed in 20 something or other to Bernard's star without the R. I don't know why I'm riffing on this so much. It's just getting in my brain. Bernard Star. All right, back to this. Okay, so what do we want here? I feel like it's going to go up there, maybe? Or does it go up here? Well, how would this look if it went like this? Does that look stupid or dumb? Uh, it's not awful. I think that works. But then we definitely need like way more stuff around here because this part looks very boring. So. I feel like there's some more colonies right around here. Just some small stuff. Probably only a few thousand people in these systems here, but uh, we just need stuff that's gonna make the route into India that much more annoying. Like so, maybe? A good question here from Nightmare saying, how come there aren't really any paths that lead in the loop? They kind of go in one line and branch out without ever making secondary routes. Uh, yes, that's because I'm working on the main routes first and I'll be doing secondary routes later on. So if it appears that way, it's only because I'm trying to get the basics uh, figured out. But that is a good observation. Okay, um, this feels like too much like a line. I, I guess we were just talking about that, but, um, I need something to break this up a bit, I think. Okay. Come on, Illustrator, just make this look good. All right, I'll take it. Good enough. This uh, double thing isn't working out for me too much. Also, I might get arrested. The uh, I'm hearing police sirens outside, which is... Uh, Interesting, because I have all my windows closed, so I should not be hearing that. They heard I was talking shit about Bernard in there, out for blood. Okay, that looks good. I like that a lot. That is... 
Although it does look too much like a subway. Too many like perfectly vertical lines. Let's something like that. Okay, this still needs work, but it's getting there. Okay, here's a question. Did this, does this maybe work like this? Okay, that's something. Although this space still feels a little empty and a little too simple for my taste. What if we, uh... Not sure. Not sure. The question is, does this also connect to something else? Does that look good? Possibly. I don't hate this, but uh, I kind of like that a bit more. I like this being a little separated. Uh, let's keep that as is for now. Brazil mostly coming together. A lot of mad naked is just looking at what you've already done. <laughs> Hoping that it all doesn't feel too out of place, so apologies if this too isn't too interesting to look at, but it's essential for the process. Oh, now that's so I'm not choking to death in the background. I saw some, some folks in chat talking about um, Acadia, saying that I need to add Acadia to Canada. Um, <clears throat> Acadia, the system, not only exists in Dawn of Victory, but it's not a part of Canada, it's its own system. Uh, because Acadia, the Federation of Acadia, is where uh, Firebase Hector is. And Firebase Hector is uh, somewhere around there. Federation of Acadia, Roseau, the Three Cities campaign. All that stuff. And for those asking about Canada, I saw some questions there too. Canada is uh, part of the UK. Canada, the nation, does not exist in Donna Victory. Hate to do it, but uh, I feel like it makes sense. Yeah, I, I kind of like doing like these independent clusters rather than working on the big nation. So let's do some more of that. I'm thinking like something here. I kind of want to um, add a bunch of systems all throughout kind of this area. Because I love this part of the map so much. This looks so cool. Now you seem to be way closer together. Something like this, maybe.
Okay, don't, I'm not in love with this quite yet, but I think it's gonna get there. Yeah, I think that works for now. You know, this is gonna be a giant ass star map. Has anyone else just realized this? I'm not sure how many people, how many star systems we have uh, on the map rather, but uh, I said there's gonna be about a thousand. There might be more than a thousand. Because uh, <laughs> this is only a small part of the map. Good lord. But you know what? We're closing in on two hours, so... Or are we? No, we're not. We still got a bit of time. Okay, let's develop this area some more here. So I, I talked before about how in making this map we're not just, you know, putting down star systems. We're also creating geopolitics. But I guess the third main pillar of the map is we're also trying to create a atmosphere or a mood or a vibe for each uh, region of the galaxy. So the idea behind the local clusters is kind of like our, our backwater or our historic center to the universe. Not a ton going on, but uh, it's still important. Whereas the Duanga Deeps is like our Caribbean Bermuda Triangle. There are no major colonies like in this area. And you gotta go around it. But there's a bunch of weird stuff in here too. So as part of that, my thinking is no major nations in the Duanga Deeps, only a bunch of independent colonies and smaller nations. And they're all kind of around the edge. Something like that. So I'm just kind of <laughs> reflecting on our progress so far, making sure this is all kind of looking good. Yeah, this road here needs some work. I'm pretty happy with how Brazil is looking. I think this is solid. I like this section here. I feel like maybe there needs to be another section around here, or maybe not. Is that too much? Another cluster, I mean. That's looking good. Well, you know what? I feel like I'm running on empty here, so let's uh, let's begin to wind things down. So let's save the map, and yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this session. So here's what's going to happen between now and next week. So we are operating on a weekly schedule now. So every Wednesday at uh, 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, that's 6 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Pacific, we're going to be building up this map. And between now and then. I'm going to be going on that document that I linked at the start. Let's put another link in the chat here. Whoops, that's the wrong link. Uh, if you have any ideas for um, names for uh, this kind of region here and uh, Brazilian star systems, add that to that document. And I'll be looking through it over the next week to uh, start naming these systems. Sorry, my cough is getting really bad here, but um, I'll be going through that document to kind of edit along to hopefully provide a template people can follow. But uh, these first few streams are going to be kind of rough in how we deal with um, crowdsourcing. So appreciate your understanding on that one and patience. But uh, apart from that, let's get to our last uh, super chats that I might have missed here. Uh, da -da -da -da. What do we got? Uh, is the Pope in Donna Victory? Yes, he is. And he is hanging out in the Vatican Moon. Vatican Moons, maybe, plural. Which is somewhere in this region, I think. 
I originally said that the uh, the Vatican moons exist as a joke, but I like the sound of it so much of the Vatican moons. Like, doesn't that sound cool? The leader of Italy is returning from a trip to the Vatican moons to meet the Pope. I don't know. I think that sounds cool. All right. What else do we got? Uh, how fast is non FTL propulsion? Uh, I don't know, but it takes about a week to cross a star system, assuming you're going from one end to the other. So if this is a star system and you jumped in from there and you wanted to jump out from there, it would take about a week to cross. That is my my thinking. Nice, simple number, and we'll uh, work from there as we go along. Okay, uh, is Canada going to be included? A lot of questions about Canada. I'm, I'm thrilled as a Canadian to hear this, but uh, Canadians are in Donna Victory. Canada is not. Canada got absorbed into the United Kingdom slash Imperial Federation slash whatever we're going to call it. And will Earth's quarantine ever end? No plans. Uh, no plans to let anyone back there anytime soon. Stuff's going on on Earth, and uh, the government has all sorts of explanations for what's happening there, but I wouldn't trust it. Just one man's advice. And finally, how expensive is it for a private citizen to own a starship? I would say it's about as expensive as owning a private, like, I don't know, like a fishing boat here on Earth. Like, it's doable. Um, but that's going to be eating into your savings. It's probably going to be uh, weighing you down. You've got to take on a lot of debt to have your own starship, but it is possible. It's just that's going to take over your life. Like, if you buy a starship, that is your life because it is a major expense. Or maybe you're rich and it doesn't matter. Okay. But I think that's the last of the super chats here. Uh, some more random uh, questions in shade here. I'll try to get some of them. Uh, can I write a story inside this universe? Yes, you can. Uh, got no problem with fan fiction of any kind. We have a channel in our Discord dedicated uh, just for that. We'd only ask, you know, don't sell anything. Don't uh, try to make money off it just yet. So, uh, where is Space Poland? Space Poland is right around here. And since I keep getting questions about Poland, um. Poland in Donna Victory is part of a futuristic version of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, slightly expanded to include the Baltic states. And uh, they are in their own little... They got their own arm, similar uh, to these two. And it appears in the 50-minute manifesto we put out. If uh, you watch that video, there's a lot of previews for what the map's going to look like, and one of the previews is of the, the Polish uh, section. So there's my only hint. And what do we got? Uh, Toxic Chicken saying, I assume pirates are a thing. Also, I gotta get that background thing working. It's kind of working, but I, I can do better. Uh, yes, pirates are a thing. Um, one of the things I like about having this multipolar Cold War framework to, to use as the basis for our geopolitics is I think in a lot of science fiction settings, there's not always an explanation for like why space pirates are a thing. Like piracy as a job, not too reliable generally, so you only see them in specific circumstances, and I think some science fiction settings don't create those circumstances, but a Cold War in which we have, you know, five powers willing to throw endless amounts of cash at any group willing to make things tougher for the rivals, I think pirates can... That's a really natural environment for uh, pirates to live within. Same with mercenaries, and same with all these other trappings we have, so... Yes, pirates are a thing. Nearly coughed right into the mic on that one. And uh, what do we got? Space privateers, yes. What's the Russian and Chinese SSR like? Big. Are there mega corporate conglomerates? Yes. Uh, are the Olympics a thing? Yes. I don't see why they wouldn't be a thing. Space Mad Max Australia, no. And what are the five powers? They are the Communist Interstellar, or Communist International, if you're a traditionalist, the Axis Powers, the Co-Prosperity Sphere, the Orion Treaty Organization, or OTO, as cool people call it, and the Non-Aligned Movement. But don't think of these as solid factions. Like, this is not a five-faction Cold War. This is like a 5,000-faction Cold War. It's just those are the five big ones. So even within the common turn, 
You have some socialist nations who are competing with the USSR to become leader of the movement. Within OTO, not everyone agrees. Within the sphere, not everyone agrees. So these are not, we call them political blocks, but they're not solid. They're, they have a bunch of nuance within them. So that is, uh, that. and you know what? Sorry, guys, my voice is giving bad on me here. Uh, I've had some health issues this past year. So when I talk for too long, my, my lungs tend to stop working. So I hope I've answered as some questions and, and you've gotten a sense of uh, what things are like here, but uh, very much appreciate uh, all the passion and all the enthusiasm for this universe. So that'll be it there. Let's go back to the old HUD. Uh, we're slowly but surely bringing the streaming schedule back to normal. It all depends on my health. But for now, one week today, we'll continue building the Dawn of Victory star map. Uh, I'll hopefully have a slighter, better explanation for how everything works and... Uh, take some more of your comments so until then thank you all so much thanks for those of you who donated sorry if i missed any uh, super chats or sorry if i missed any regular comments but uh nature of the beast but uh i think that's everything i'll put one more link to all our stuff in here and i'll uh catch you next time so thanks again and uh see you next week